What up, what up, what up? Welcome to Educational Boxing Talks with your host, Cedric Ben. For those of you, if this is your first time uh, tuning in, I've been a high-level amateur boxing coach for the past 17 years. I've had numerous national champions, a few boxers that uh, have had success at uh, international competitions. I'm an ass- currently an assistant coach with Team Canada, and I currently have three of my boxers that started out with me are currently training with the with Canadian national team. Just to give you a little bit of my background. All right, let's get right into it. Francis Ngannou versus Tyson Fury, and I'll give you a little table of contents on how we're going to go through uh, go through the show today. So first, I'm going to start with the scorecard. And hopefully you have your scorecard uh, so we can compare them. Because I always ask people to bring your scorecard and and not just simply your opinion. Bring your scorecard and an explanation. All right. Um, so first we're going to talk about the scorecard. And then we'll talk about some more details about the fight. Um, and then we'll talk about the future for, for each fighter. So starting off this fight did not go as expected nobody expected it to go to go this way we'll get to the scorecards first so the official winner for the fight was Tyson Fury uh the the official scorecards were 94 to 95 one judge actually had it for Ngannou the two other judges had it 95 to 94 and the other judge had it 96 to 93 for for, for Tyson Fury and I also scored at 96 to 93 for Tyson Fury. Now, here's the thing. I already know what everyone's saying. And, and this is the common thing. And this is kind of what happened in, in the Devin Haney and Lomachenko fight. For everyone that did not score the fight, everyone that didn't score the fight, 99% of them are going to say that Francis Ngannou won the fight. Because he won the story of the fight. Not the actual boxing match, but he he won won the story of the fight. So let's uh, let's get into it. What I thought was going to happen was that Francis Ngannou was uh, actually sorry. We got to rewind that. We'll get into the scorecard first. So first round, Fury came out with a big right hand right off the bat, try to try to take him out, but Ngannou was not having that. Um, so the first round I gave to Tyson Fury because he did he did land two good right hands. Francis Ngannou, he actually looked, in that first round, he looked, surprised me that he actually looked good like a boxer. I was not ex- ex- expecting him to come out looking that good. Um, still give Tyson Fury that first round for landing two significant right hands. The second round, uh, Tyson Fury simply outboxed him in that second round. There was nothing specific, nothing special about it, but Fury outboxed him in that second round. The third round is when things uh, 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 started to change to to. My surprise, Ngannou, sorry, I shouldn't say to my surprise, because we all knew Ngannou had that power, but this early. Ngannou dropped Tyson Fury in that third round with a left hook. And just to show you Ngannou's power, man, like it even, it didn't even look like he, he did turn his hip and his foot a little bit, but like it didn't even look like he put his whole body into that counter punch, that counter left hook, that grazed. It even hit Tyson Fury on the chin, like grazed his forehead, and he still went down. And that... <laughs> That facial expression that Tyson Fury had when he went to the ground, like, if fa- if you can hear this facial expression, he was like, whoo! <laughs> he knew that power was real. And that was, uh, that was the beginning of, of uh, how things turned around in that fight for Fury. So obviously when you lose, when you get dropped at the pro ranks, you lose the round, you automatically lose the round unless you come back. But Fury didn't come back in that third round. He survived it, but he didn't come back. In the fourth round, gave it to Francis Ngannou. So right now, after four rounds, the score is tied because the first two, actually, Ngannou's up by one point because the knockdown counts as two. Um, the fourth round, I gave to Francis Ngannou. Tyson Fury was <laughs> borderline scared, which is crazy because he already fought, Tyson Fury fought. Deontay Wilder, who we all know is one of the hardest punchers ever, and got up and did that to him. So the body language that Tyson Fury was showing in that fourth round was that, yo, he, this guy, this Ngannou guy has some serious power. But like I said, it shouldn't be, it should not have surprised him because he's faced guys with, with that, that, that type of power before and has, was able to come back. 
The next three rounds, this is again, this is why I encourage people to score fights. Because there's close when there's close rounds that could have went either way, you need to give specific explanations of why you gave it to uh, to one person. All right. So the first, the next three rounds, round five, I gave to Tyson Fury, jabs and boxing. And Ganu was hesitating too much in that fifth round. Like he was looking for one big bomb. He was coming forward. He was coming forward and had good stance and everything, but he was waiting too much for, to land one big bomb. Tyson Fury's pop, pop, pop. Now, of course, power punches count more. Count more than just jabs, but it was not effective aggression by Ngannou. Like, they, they weren't... The, the, if those power punches were actually landing, it would have had the same effect that dropped Tyson Fury in the, in the third round. Right? So, even though Ngannou was coming forward, and I was going for Ngannou, too, by default. I was going for him, too, but I could not give him that fifth round. Jabs and boxing. Ngannou hesitating too much. Round six. My specific notes for round six was that Ngannou had no answer for the jab. Jabs. Fury was using his jabs to keep Ngannou at bay. Not so that he wouldn't get hit with no bombs. Um, And that was the main thing. Yes, it it was just a jab. It might not have been a, a pretty power punch that... You know, make the crowd say ooh or ah, but it, it was an effective punch to keep Francis Ngano from just charging forward. He was coming forward, but again, it was not effective or aggressive. It, he wasn't doing anything to, to 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 stop Tyson Fury from moving around, not cutting off the ring. Not he was throwing punches, but they were missing or being blocked, not landing. If they were, if those punches were landing, then it would have been a different story for for Tyson Fury. He wouldn't have been able to let the to go with the ten rounds. If, if Ngannou's punches were landing. Round seven. Round seven, I marked it as a close round. Sorry, I also marked uh, n- round number four as a close round. That could have went either way. Round seven, I also marked it as a close round. Could have went either way. So if you marked it, if you if you scored it for Ngannou, I ain't mad at that. Because my notes for round seven was barely. It just looked like uh, uh, my specific notes was Fury looked like he had better stamina in that round seven. I was expecting Ngano to, to 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 run out of gas earlier. He actually looked very good. He only started to like move around with his mouth open around round seven, eight. And it was only ten rounds, so those twelve rounds might have been a different story. But so in that seventh round, again, not much difference. Ngano was coming forward, but Tyson Fury's stamina with his good jab was keeping Francis off of him. That's the main thing that was keeping Francis off of him. Round eight. Round eight, I marked it as a clear round for Francis Ngannou. That's all I wrote for my notes was clear. A clear round for Francis Ngannou, round eight. And then round nine and ten, I put a star beside round nine and ten because those both of those rounds, again, could have went either way. Both of those rounds could have went either way. Um, my notes for round nine was that Tyson Fury was barely boxing better. Again, it was close. Barely boxing better. So that wasn't that much, man. And the same thing for round 10. The final round, on my notes was just Tyson Fury just barely boxed better. Just barely landed the the, the, the better punches. Um, so that's the scorecard. <laughs> it wasn't... So as I expected, Francis did get tired towards the end of the fight because, you know, uh, MMA fight five, five minute rounds is 25 minutes. This was 12, three minute rounds is 36 minutes. So it was only 10 rounds. So it was really only a half an hour. Um, so still five minutes longer than he would. And, you know, boxing is different movement. So, you, you know, you just breathe differently. So I thought Tyson Fury was going to be able to take over when Francis got tired, but that was not the case. What I believe happened was that when Tyson Fury felt that power that made him change his mind about the game plan, which again, which is crazy to think because he fought Deontay Wilder and got up from him. But I think the difference, the difference was in, with Ngannou is that he Tyson Fury could not manhandle Ngannou because they were because they weighed the same size. Ngannou, I think Fury weighed in at 277. Ngannou weighed in at 272. So with Deontay Wilder only weighed like 215 pounds. So even though he had rock your world type power 
he couldn't move you around. So Tyson Fury could, you know, if he wanted to, like he did, would just use his size and kind of lean on him, kind of move you around. He tried to do that with, with Nganu. He tried to lean on Nganu. Nganu, who was a, you know, world-class wrestler, UFC wrestler, he grabbed him was like, no, 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 you're not doing nothing. Get off me. So that, that the, the, the physicality factor that Tyson Fury usually has over his other opponents was n- absolutely not there at all against Nganu against Nganu. Nganu was not getting pushed around at all. He felt right uncomfortable on, on the inside. Um, so the way, like I said, he, he could not, uh, <laughs> he could not bully, bully Nganu the way he, he does, uh, with the other guys. Going back to, um, the effectiveness of the punches, when you talk about jabs and, uh, and power punches, when it talks about jabs and power punches, again, I, I said this a bit earlier. Obviously, power punches count more to uh, count more than just than this jabs. If it's if you're comparing one to the other, but this was not the case. And again, if for the people that did not score the fight, they're gonna say these are the exact words they're gonna say. Well, you know, Francis won, Francis was the one that was being more aggressive and coming forward. Yeah, he was, but again, it was not effective aggression because if any if if just a few of those punches actually landed on Tyson Fury. Again, it would have been, Tyson Fury would, would not have been able to move around and use his jab to keep Francis off of him because his legs would have been too gone from getting rocked. So, yeah, he was being aggressive, but uh, it was not effective aggressive. Now, let's specifically look at, uh, at some of the, the power punches, the compu stats. Let me pull it up here. So, so, so. When it comes specifically to the power punches, right? Because that's what uh, that's what everyone w- was was thinking on. Every, everyone was talking about. Everyone saying yes, Fury might have been landing more jabs, but but uh, Francis was more with the power punches. Well, let's look at the stats here. I'm not even going to go through the jabs because that's was clear clear for Tyson Fury. But as far as the power punches. Listen to the stats here. So, and we'll go from rounds five to ten because the early, the first half of the fight was a little bit closer. The second half of the fight is when really is when people are. Um, that's the second half of the fight that people remember the most because if a fight's half an hour long, if you don't score the fight, you're it's hard to remember what you know if the first part what what happened twenty five minutes earlier or twenty minutes earlier in the first half of the fight. So if one person is doing better in the second half of the fight and then they lose, that's all that people remember. So let's go through the 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 the, the final punch stats of power punches. From this is from found from round five to ten. So round five, Fury was four for eleven, thirty six percent. Angano was three for twelve, twenty five percent. So Fury was higher percentage in power punches. Round six. Two for five. He only threw five. Pun- Fury only threw five power punches, landed two of them. And Ganu threw fourteen and landed four. So the activity again, the activity was there. That's that. Maybe is what may, is what uh, is what's confusing people because the activity was there. He threw almost ten more punches, but only landed two more. Round seven, again. Fury three for four. Uh, and Ganu four for eleven, so he threw again a, not, a lot more punches. What seven more punches, but only landed one more. So again, fake activity making it look like like he's clearly winning. Round eight, round eight, Tyson Fury six for fifteen for forty percent, and Ganu seven for twenty nine for thir- for twenty four percent. All right, so. Again, he threw almost, again, Ngandu threw almost 15 more punches in that round. Almost threw almost 15 more punches, only landed one more. Only one. Round nine, round nine, Tyson Fury power punches, three for six. Ngandu, one for seven. (laughs) Three for six, one for seven. That was round nine, and that was the round that I marked as a close round. And then round ten. The final round for power punches, Tyson Fury was two for six. Ngannou was two for seven. 
See what I mean? So this is what I mean about um, Tyson Fury won the fight. Francis Ngannou won the story of the fight. He won the story because this guy, professional boxing debut, was not supposed to be able to hang with the with the, with the person that everyone says, not me, I'll get into the details about that after, that most people were saying is the best boxer, heavyweight boxer of, of this generation. Um, and he went the distance with him and did very good for himself. So much respect to, to Francis Ngannou. Number four. And just little things that, uh, you know, the, the casual fan might not be able to see, but, you know, the coach's eye, if you're, if you've been, or if you've been boxing for a while, these are little things like, that you can see. How Ngannou was in Fury's head. Little things like, you see, when, when Fury turned to Southpaw, let me rewind that. When, I, when I'm coaching the boxers, I tell people, you can switch orthodox to Southpaw, but have a purpose to do it. Like if if you see an advantage that you can take it that you can something that you can take advantage of if you switch to switch your stance, then do that. But don't just switch just for the sake of switching, just to show you I can do it. <clears throat> when Ngannou, I think it was the third or uh, maybe the fourth or fifth round, Ngannou switched to southpaw, and Fury he did it. He switched to southpaw too, but he didn't do anything out of it. Like Fury didn't he didn't he didn't do anything different. He just you can tell that he just switched. For the sake of switching, because just to show Ngannou that I can switch too. So, and that's that just tells me a sign that Ngannou was in Fury's head. Fury and his camp, they were not expecting, including myself, I'm not going to say Fury. I w nobody was expecting Ngannou, I guess besides his his camp, was expecting him to, to box as well as he did. Like that. And so I think that, that surprise, that surprised Fury that he boxed as good as he did. It also surprised Fury that he was not able to manhandle Ngannou like he did with other people. And then the crazy thing is that Francis, and judging by Fury's body language, Francis Ngannou might have more power than Deontay Wilder. I'm just judging by, by uh, Fury's body language. Because again, he got dropped multiple times by Wilder who, again, we all agree is one of the hardest punchers ever, he got up multiple times and still stopped him. But with Ngano, that he was not trying to mix it up after he got hit that one time. He was straight trying to box, and that's what he did, and, and won, won the fight. Um, where are we at? Where are we at? <clears throat> Why Ngano? This is a, one of the... Okay, so that's enough about the fight there. Let's get into a few details. I'm going to get a few details about uh, about each fighter now, starting with uh, with Ngannou. So this guy, and this one thing that I noticed, like Ngannou was not afraid at all. This guy, this guy was not afraid at all. Um, and one of the things that I think it comes from, just from that that uh, working with the MMA world for a few years now. Shout out to MTC Maximum Training Center, the number one. MMA gym in Windsor, um, working with some MMA guys, specifically when it comes to sparring, because in MMA they fight with four ounce gloves. When they spar boxers with bigger regular boxing gloves, like a lot of times the MMA guys, they, they don't mind taking two or three punches to give you two or three of their hard ones, right? Because they're used to getting hit with four ounce gloves. So when they, in boxing, you fight with eight, ten eight and 10, and then you spar with like 16 ounce gloves. So like for MMA guys, them 16 ounce gloves are like pillows. So that when it comes to sparring, they don't mind taking two or three to land two or three bombs of their own on you. Um, the reason why I bring that up, because that's what it looked like with, uh, with Ngannou and Francis. On top of that, coupled with the fact that even though Fury, even though Fury knocked out Wilder and uh, Dylan White most recently. For his career, he's not really known as a, as a knockout puncher, as a power puncher, right? Um, he's not really known as, as a knockout puncher. So with that being said, I think that's what gave Ngannou the confidence to not be afraid and just, you know, box him and come after him the way he did. Because even there were some punches, Fury actually did land some good punches. I just talked to you about the power, the power punches. Fury was actually landing. 
and Gano just walked right through that like it was nothing. As a matter of fact, Fury actually landed a dirty elbow. I don't know if you guys, I, I didn't even notice it during the fight. I only saw it in the replay. Like he threw a punch. He didn't even, the right hand, the right hand didn't even come close to the face. He just threw this and just followed through with his elbow. And Gano took that and just walked forward like it was nothing. Maybe that's why it wasn't noticeable in the fight. Because Ngannou had absolutely no reaction to taking an elbow to the face from uh, from Fury. Um, so yeah, I talked about you know they 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 don't mind taking a little bit more chances with the with the softer boxing gloves. They don't mind taking more chances with them with them softer boxing gloves because if they catch you, especially getting when you get when you're used to punching with them four ounce gloves, you can feel, you can really feel your power. The, the, the boxing gloves with the little extra cushion, right? You you still feel your power if you're used to punching, but, like, when you're wearing them forearms gloves, like, you could literally feel your knuckles going through. So, yeah, yeah, that's the advantage that the, that the MMA guys have. Um, Tyson Fury. And then I'll end up, I'll end with go, going back to Ngannou again after. So... I don't know, man. This guy, this guy's something else. Cause this is what I said. I've been saying this for years now, and I have my receipts to back it up. I've always said Tyson Fury is a very good boxer, very good boxer, but he is not as good as everyone was saying he was, or is, or was, whichever the right word to use. Not as good as everyone. I didn't, I didn't put him on the same pedestal that everyone else was putting him on. And I've explained this many times. I'm not just saying this because of the fight now. Shout out to my boy Jesse. Shout out to Mike. Shout out to Vince. Those, are, those guys are my receipts. I can bring them on and have them prove that I've been saying years ago that this Tyson Fury guy is not as good as everyone says he is. It's too, he didn't even fight the best of this generation. That Klitschko win, Klitschko was... 39 years old with gray hair. 13, nine years old with gray hair is when Tyson Fury beat him. Okay? That was not in someone's prime. I'm sorry. So I don't even count that win. And then the next one was the, the trilogy against Deontay Wilder. Tyson Fury needs to thank Wilder because Wilder is what made Fury's career. That trilogy is what made Fury's career. Now, think to yourself, what skill level... Like, is Deontay Wilder at? Like, where do you put, where do you rank Deontay's skill level as far as all the, you know, looking at all the boxers in this generation or previous generations? Most people are going to tell you that Deontay Wilder does not have a highly high skill level, even though he has life-altering power in his hands, life-altering change-your-mind type power in his hands. The skill level is not all there. And this is the Tyson Fury second best win. So with those two wins right there, I said, how, how can, how, why is everyone calling this guy the best boxer of this generation? And he can, people were already saying like, people were already saying like, we don't even need to see the anti Joshua fight or the Usyk fight. Cause we already know Tyson's the best of this generation. I was like, how are you, what are you guys talking about? How? No, no, no. So anyways, I was one of the only people that uh, was not surprised at, um, you know, uh, uh, sorry, not surprised. I, I was still expecting Tyson Fury to win the fight. <laughs> but, you know, not surprised that he he kind of performed under what everyone was expecting him, uh, expecting him to do. So where does he go from here? And there's no excuses because... I already hear everyone saying, you know, well, he must have not took this fight seriously or he obviously didn't train as hard. No, 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 no. Tyson Fury was quoted as saying he trained, I wrote it down, he trained 12 weeks, four months for this fight. So he was ready, sorry, three months. He trained 12 weeks for this fight. So he was ready. He said he took this fight seriously, um, especially knowing that he, he already had a fight signed uh, to fight Usyk in December. Like, he was so confident that he was going to win this fight that he already signed his contract for the next fight in December. Um, there's people saying the excuse that Tyson Fury had a year off 
No, 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 no. That's not an excuse. You want to know why? Because Nganu had two years off. And he was coming back from knee surgery. This guy. And he's not even a boxer. Oh, my God. I can't believe this. Nah. No excuses, man. I don't care if he had a year off. This guy, Nganu, had two years off. And coming back from knee surgery. And this is his pro boxing debut. Nah, nah, nah. No excuses. This Tyson Fury, he was so embarrassed at his performance, this guy didn't even show up to the post-fight press conference. He didn't even show up. Now, there are cases where people, it's acceptable not to show up. Like, you know, if um, if you get knocked out badly, or if you get knocked out, or if you just get beat up really badly, you know, people would understand you didn't show up to the press conference because you got to go to the hospital. Make sure you're all right. But just, just from a regular loss, this guy didn't even show up to the post-fight press conference that just shows you he was embarrassed by his performance and he wasn't trying to face that fire of questions on how did you look like that against a guy in his professional debut. So anyways, yeah. So where does Francis go from here? Man, if I was him, <laughs> if I was Francis, I would throw up two middle fingers to Dana White. Be like, yeah, see what I did? Yeah, you want to pay me $300,000 for my championship fight in the UFC? I just got paid $10 million for my championship boxing match. Yes, you heard it right. Francis Ngannou's UFC contract. Super heavyweight champion of the world. The top guy. The top heavyweight. The biggest, strongest guy in the sport. He got $300,000 for his UFC fight. He got $10 million for this fight with uh, Tyson Fury. Why the hell would he go back to MMA? And I got love for MMA. Much respect to the whole MMA. You know, they train hard just as much as the boxers. I respect those guys and girls. As far as the finances, though, the paychecks, um, specifically when it comes to Francis right now, he needs, he needs to stay, like, ride this 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 wave while it's still hot. He's also up there. I think he's, like, 35 or 36 years old, so it's not like he has time to develop. He just got paid 10 mil. The whole world is on his back right now because a lot of people are thinking that he won this fight. He needs to capitalize on that and take on the other guys. Like, I, I, I you know what's crazy to think? Huh. I can't believe I'm actually about to say this. Deontay Wilder versus Francis Ngannou would actually be a very even fight. <laughs> if you think about it, and it would be crazy to think that Francis Ngannou actually has the chance and power to knock out Deontay Wilder. That would be crazy. That would be crazy. And the reason why it would be so exciting is because it would be power versus power. Power versus power. And it's about who's going to get caught first. <laughs> for real, because um, I don't know. I haven't watched Ngannou's whole UFC career, but I don't know if he's been knocked out or if he's got hurt and been able to weather the storm and come back. Um, but yeah, that would be very interesting. Um, to be honest with you, I don't think Tyson Fury is going to take that rematch, even though the, the whole boxing world and MMA world was going to tell him to do it. The risk is not worth the reward. <laughs> Because the reward, if he wins the fight, people are going to say, well, that's what you're supposed to do the first time, right? You probably just didn't train hard and da-da-da. They'll make excuses for him and say, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. But if he loses, we're, you know, worst case scenario, it's knocked out. Whoa. That, that's what I mean by the risk is not, worth, is not worth the reward for Tyson Fury to take that rematch. He should, you know, to, to, to make it right. Um because this was, and that's the other thing too. I hear a lot of people saying that this was an embarrassment to boxing. No, 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 no. This, this was an embarrassment to Tyson Fury. This is Terrence Crawford, Canelo. These guys, these guys had nothing to do with this, this, with, with this fight here. Don't put this on them. They had nothing to do with this. This is all Tyson Fury. You guys, yeah, yeah not me. You guys put this guy, this Tyson Fury guy as as the, the best fight of this jet best fighter of this generation and and one of the greatest fighters of heavyweights of all time you guys said that you guys and then you saw what happened last saturday so 
Now, with that being said, <laughs> I still did have him winning the fight by by three rounds. Um, but by boxing skills, not by by fighting, but by boxing, right? So there you have it. That is my take on uh, the big heavyweight clash from last Saturday. Tyson Fury versus Francis Ngannou. It's going to be very interesting to see. Like I said, man, if if I was Francis Ngannou, I don't, I don't know what his, I know he's still signed to the PFL. Not He's not UFC anymore. He's with the PFL. Um, I don't know. I, if I was him, I'd take my $10 million and buy myself out of that PFL contract. And that's the... <laughs> And that's the other thing too. People say this is this looks bad on boxing. No, no, no. You know who this le- looks bad on? Looks looks bad on Data White, because now all the MMA guys are gonna try to call out, which they have been, gonna try to call out boxers. That guy Sean O'Malley, I think that's his name. The guy with the colorful, colorful hair. He's a pretty popular guy, right? I've seen him calling out Gervonta Davis. I'm pretty sure they're around the same way. He was calling out Gervonta Davis. So. I don't know. You, that's, but that's the thing, though. See, the only reason why this fight happened is because Francis Ngannou was not signed with the UFC anymore. So he can do whatever the F he wants. UFC guys, you got to go ask permission. <laughs> and I don't know if Dana White, it depends how much money is there. Because, like, Dana White, you know, they're going to be taking most of that money. You know that You know that Conor McGregor fight? Conor McGregor made, like, 100 mil. You know Dana White took 40% of that? 40% of that 40 of that mil. Because McGregor was still was still under UFC contract, so all you UFC guys calling out the boxers, I don't know. You gotta have to go talk to go talk to your boss because he's gonna be taking a big chunk of that money. Um, so yeah, there you have it. Once again, much respect to Francis Ngannou. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you haven't done it yet, please press the like button and subscribe to. Shout out to the Talk and Fight Network, the other the other great boxing YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe and like their channel too. All right, I'm out. Peace.